There it is. Doesn't make the same mistake twice in uh, missing a square cut. Although McKay made the same mistake twice in giving him the opportunity. That's another lovely innings from David Boone. Quite outstanding. Yes, a wonderful knock from David Boone and five more runs added to take it along to 307 for three at the close. Border is with him on 38. No joy for the England bowlers. I thought Bickner was the best of them. 21 overs, four maidens and one for 63. But real problems for the four-man seam attack. Okay, now, the England bowlers didn't have a good day. It must have been a sad day for Graham Gooch, I would think. But David Boone was absolutely terrific. We'll be on air tomorrow, BBC Two, 10.55 a.m. for the moment. It's goodbye. He'd never scored a test century in England, and then came Lords, 1993. That's it. Well, a fighting hundred, a gutsy one. And a big crowd giving him everything he deserves. Next came Trent Bridge. That'll be it. That'll be the hundred. Sixteenth for David Boone for Australia. His fifth against England, second in successive test matches. Yesterday at Headingley, David Boone made it 300 in consecutive tests. Thanks to Boone, the Australians had the centre victory once again. Yes, David Boone played quite magnificently yesterday for his 102 not out. He needs just one more run for 500 in this test series. Welcome to highlights of the second day. Great viewing yesterday and uh, today the conditions were set fair. This is the way the Australians began, 307 for three with Slater out for 67, Mark Taylor 27 and Mark War 52, Boone is on 102 and Border 38. A great day for the Australians there and David Boone faces the first ball of this second day, Andrew Caddick is the bowler. Well, that's uh, an improvement from yesterday. The first ball went for four. Two there. That's better bowling. Yeah, well, that's a perfect example of uh, where the bowler should be bowling. Length was right. Direction was right. And there was some movement and Alan Burr probably just getting outside off stump. That's the area. That is the area. Off stump, there is movement. See Alan Burda's feet not moving there, the bat just following the ball, there was swing there. Given him. Boone playing leg side and uh, it was a very full length. And there was the movement, but umpire Bird had no hesitation. And that's the breakthrough that England needed and uh, the first of the two or three wickets in uh, Raymond said they have to get before lunch. Yes, what they had to look at was whether that ball pitched line wicket to wicket. I think it just did pitch on the leg stump with a bit about probably leg in middle then. And by uh, Dickie Bird, no hesitation. Didn't really do a great deal, just that uh, I think Boone was trying to play a bit too much on the leg side. We ought to be in playing it roughly towards the bowler. Not much doubt about that. Well, there's Steve Waugh coming in at 321 for four. 
hardly crisis time and uh, you know, on this ground four years ago he came in at 273 for four promptly smacked 177 not out I'm bored of playing a lot without much foot movement at the moment. He's driving again there without getting that right foot to the pitch of the ball. That's the main reason he got the inside edge there. Not sure whether he's here for the whole five-day game without going home. Mark Eilert. <laughs> oh, and that's the first authentic boundary of the morning. Not sure the foot was quite over there, but uh, the ball hit the middle of the bat. And that's Alan Borders, 50. Typical border, angled bat, pushing the shots all along the ground. 50 runs coming from 124 balls. Well, the ball flew up then past Robin Smith. Was it uh, off the pad? Was the bat on it? I don't think you really expect Robin Smith to catch these. It went so quickly, even if he hit the ball. Can't blame Mark Eilert. He's looking to pitch the ball up, get them in swing, which is possible, that is cover fielding, uh, field placing is wrong there because you expect to be driven through extra cover if you're running the ball into the bat. Just a fraction over pitched. And there was the width about it. It drew Alan Border right out there and beautiful shot square on the offside four runs all the way yeah she just keeps giving him the odd ball to hit a lot of width full up tempting for a wicket but also tempting to hit to second slip. Nice catch, but not a catch. And that's well bowled again. A result for the first one because the batsman didn't touch it. He touched that one. And I guess it missed the stub by a whisker. Bit of a glare there from Martin Bicknell, just letting Steve Warren know that he thinks he's very fortunate to still be there. Good stroke. The outfield yesterday was a bit slow. There's been plenty of rain here over the last couple of weeks at uh, Headingley. Today, it might have quickened up marginally. better example of uh, what we were talking about about the inconsistency Martin Bicknell bowled a super over last over not a bad ball the first one Steve will hit for four but that was long hop and plenty of width
Steve Waugh has had a few problems, uh, particularly recently in his career, around off stump, and that ball just moving off the seam. He's done him again. Two balls ago, it was a beautiful leg cutter. Uh, that one. Steve Waugh is going to look for two there. That's brilliant running, and it's also well fielded by Bicknell, who came in very, very fast. Came in fast, gathered it in, and he's got a good flat throw. Good shot. Fielder might just have slipped a crack, so I doubt it could have made any difference. Everything that's in the slot, and uh, Steve Wall gives it to Hammer. the bandit gully he can bat a little and in addition to his bowling he has uh, fielding prowess didn't quite time that it's a short side over there the western side of the ground it's always very very difficult to cut anything off that gets through the field Once again, the Australians continuing with their high proportion of boundaries. One stage in his innings yesterday, David Boone was up to almost 75% of his runs scored in boundaries. Again, nipping back. But again, umpire Plews uh, deciding it doesn't qualify. Again, I think height probably come into it. Uh, it's in above the top of the knee roll. Well, now then, we've got a picture called for here from... Uh, <laughs> the replay by Dickie Bird. Let's just see what happened. Third umpire for the first time in the game. Well, that's why, because Dickie wasn't in position. He's got it, he's got the decision, and uh, the decision is not out. Unusual for umpire Bird to be caught out of position, and that was the reason he asked. Uh, the Australian card at lunch, 393 for four, with Boone out for 107 this morning. Border cautious at times for his 75, but he's played very well tactically, and Steve Waugh, 37. The good news for England is that the bowling was more consistent today. Yesterday, they were all over the shop. Today, very much better. McCaig, still none for 102. I let the wicket-taker this morning, three for 91 in all. We join play after lunch. It's the second over. Two runs have been added, and Andrew Caddick is bowling to Stephen Waugh. That's four. The six off the first two balls will Caddick straight after lunch. Not exactly what he had in mind. Australians for the loss of four wickets. I 
half a dozen times he's launched himself at that ball. It's given him a bit of width outside the off stump. Well, England have got off to the worst possible start to, after lunch. Not created any pressure at all. They've given away easy runs with some bad balls. As Richie Benno said, some sort of ordinary bowling straight after lunch. Just when you wanted to make a big effort to pressurise the batsman. Nicely placed again. Well, one was uh, well up outside off stump and slashed away to the boundary. The next one has gone for three, pitching on leg stump and just eased away through mid wicket. was a short ball he ducked into him on the shoulder I think big appeal from the wicketkeeper and some of the other fielders but you'll see him duck yeah, from the chest shoulder area very good decision from the umpire century for Steve Waugh. He's played some flashing strokes. Hasn't always been, uh, well, hasn't always seemed to be 100% certain in his defensive play. The pace of the pitch seems to have worried him a little bit. He's faced 87 balls for his 51. Just occasionally he's uh, looked to be playing for the wrong pace or bounce of the pitch, but 51 from 87 balls, you couldn't ask for more than that. well bowled. That's what he's got to do. Some aggression into his bowling. Four seventeen for four. 84 to border, 52 to Steve Waugh. Steve Waugh has strike. Caddick will be bowling. Great shot. That was a beautiful stroke. Wonderful, wristy shot. <laughs> that will be a very, very ominous sight for England's bowlers. The Caddick might shake his head. That was a glorious stroke to follow the square cut. Just fractionally short of uh, Gooch at mid-on. The feeling that might have been a bit slower, that delivery from Caddick. And War just looked as though he checked his stroke a little. And that's a lovely stroke from Border once again. Lovely stroke from Alan Border again. Four. Gets him into the 90s, 13th boundary. Lovely shot. Doesn't have to be a true half volley for Steve Ward to pierce the offside. 
D472, Alan Border, 98. Oh, beautifully played, and that's it. That's a century for the Australian captain. It's the England captain who has to do the chasing down to extra cover, but that's a fine century by Alan Border. Dogged, determined, but also studied with lovely strokes like that cover drive which brought in his century. Here's Jeff Boycott. A good T-100 was that. Very watchful at times. Careful. Then some super shots in between. Another beautiful stroke. My word, he timed that well. Oh. <laughs> they look more like it's a knockout than test cricket down there. I think they're giving four because surely they were in contact with the ball while they were over the rope or touching the rope. And so it was. Four signaled by umpire Dickie Bird. Short and wide. Actually, Mark Eilert bowled a long spell this morning. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he's just getting a little weary. into a, a cover drive off the back foot, four runs. That's a good stroke. The border was very quick to get onto that. Brilliant stop. It slipped out of Caddick's hand. He's uh, had a problem with the foothold there, but a great stop by Stewart. Yes, it was the awkward length of this pitching halfway and then hitting the foothold. One of the footholds from the bowl was run up at the other end. That was a brilliant stop. Top left hand corner of the net that was going. crowd who didn't realize that was a bump ball out that and didn't realize it was coming towards him good job we did it was in straight between the eyes i think yes went a bit quicker as well i think it was a little quicker than he expected one more ball was bowled before rain took the players off for t 10 minutes early that's the score at tea time 492 for four with border 115 and war 93 and the bowling figures for england well, they really were in trouble because McCaig was off the field having uh, treatment. 28 overs, two maidens done for 115 for him. Islet has three wickets and Bicknell one for 111. We join play after tea now in the third over. One run has been added. Bicknell is the bowler and War is taking strike. Before more. Takes him on to 98. Again, it's the half volley off stump. Steve Ward just uh, directing it wide of the bowler and down the hill, and that's always forward at Headingley. Border's 16th boundary, and uh, he's hit none harder than this. Also brought up the 500. The four more. Well, board has shown that he's only prepared to hit the loose ball, but he's again he's getting just like yesterday too many of them. Well, the 
That's an indifferent shot from Alan Border. Played very few of those today. Well, I bet Steve Ward's heart was in his mouth here. 98, he nearly nicked that. Well, a lovely pull shot there by Alan Border. Border short of a length. He just picked the length up so well. Didn't try to hit it too hard, just helped it on its way. That should be it. In nearly 25 minutes, Steve Wars in on 98, but that's it. Lovely hundred. Better mark. And that's his fifth hundred, his third against England, all in this country. From this ground, that uh, Steve Waugh scored his maiden hundred in 1989. Still to be dismissed at Headingley. 520 for four, and Mark Eilert goes around the wicket this time to Steve Waugh. And that is the 200 partnership. Alan Border and Steve Waugh, immaculate batting. Three in this. At one stage, the ball was changed and the replacement one swung a bit for the first time in the match, but uh, not for long. And of course, there's no real requirement for Alan Border to declare the innings closed today. It's uh, simply a matter of Drawing the match, retaining the Ashes. Two test matches to come. Australia are 2 0 up. Beautifully played. It's a much slower ball, but Border waited and waited and found that it was wide and he loved the width and played that square slashing drive. Yes, it was typical Border again. No real back lift, just like to smash it square on the offside. Shout there, but uh, no response there from umpire Nigel Poo. Just a wry smile, which says it all. I think Alex was just uh, having a stretch behind the stumps there. Good stop. Piece of feeling by McLaughlin there. Good shot. A tired ball dropped short, no great speed, and uh, Alan Border pounced on that. This is a poor delivery, particularly a man that's got a hundred. And I think you can really see that. Uh, Heads are beginning to drop a little out there now on the England side. A bit of a despondent look about it, and it's happened all before, and when shall we start batting kind of thing. Four more. Clouds are coming over again. Perhaps some uh, 
heavy rain just for a very short period a couple of times today got that away pretty well didn't quite climb as we would have wished my little soft boundary Mark Taylor with uh, White Judy and Baby. Spot for four. Caddick alongside umpire Harold Bird has just turned around and looked down the pitch. Just a little bit of a slump of the shoulders there. Wasn't all that bad a delivery. Well, it doesn't have to be a bad delivery at Heading Lee. It's nice pace pitch. The margin for error isn't great at Heading Lee. And many of his ex players have been in this situation before where you feel the two days, it's quite soul destroying for the bowlers. It even gets the batsman down particularly the opening batsmen, they'll be watching the clock at this stage. Good shot. Wonderful stroke from Alan Border to bring up his 150. I mentioned earlier in the day, he's so good at judging the length. For a small man, he plays right forward when playing defensively, but then he can quickly rock back onto the back foot, whether he's hitting it on the offside or pulling it. And then that sort of thing happens. Now, Caddick will be... He won't be depressed by that, but he will be shaking his head and saying, this is a very, very strange game. Movement off the seam, lift. Stewart took it head high. Batsman didn't get a touch. Need to chase that. Gooch got his uh, front foot caught up there in uh, the foothold on the batting crease. And Thorpe is the bowler again. Well, that's an indication of uh, just what dominance has been by the Australian batsmen all the way through. They've made 300 in boundaries now with that one that's flown away down to third man. And beaten on 161, that's from uh, 325 balls placed. Uh, it's Sod's law, isn't it? You battle away, you wait and you concentrate ball after ball after ball. And eventually, late on the second day, one finds its way into your hands and then finds its way out again. Yes, you call it a straightforward chance, even though it was a flashing drive. But it just came at that awkward height as to how you should catch it with the fingers pointing down to the earth or fingers pointing upwards. Found the gap perfectly. 24th boundary for Alan Border. That's the 600. Not too sure how many times in test history a side has reached 600 twice 
in successive matches on the same ground but uh, somebody will tell us I'm sure well, they're looking for the six it's there somewhere more a tired shot than anything you do feel that uh, Martin Bicknell just deserves a little edge there. He's tried out all day. He bought some good deliveries. He bought some good deliveries last night as well, late on, when he beat both batsmen who were well established. That is it. And what a day for Australia and Alan Border and Steve Wall. A draining day mentally and physically for the batsmen and also for England's captain. Selection policies backfired. A good hand for uh, Alan Border, the senior statesman, and Steve Waugh, thoroughly experienced middle order batsman, and what a partnership it's been. 292. Yes, a great partnership to have the final score at the end of the second day, 613 for four. That's the highest score ever on the Headingley ground. 175 to border, 144 to war. The man out earlier in the day, David Boone, and the bowling for England. Depressing figures there, McCaig none for 115, Islet three for 145, and a wicket to Bicknell, who I thought was the best of the England bowlers throughout this match. Well, Ian Chappell has his ideas on the day and the state of the match, and with him is Geoffrey Boycott. Today's the day the Ashes went for England. They've gone. And uh, Steve Waugh and Alan Border put that uh, into perspective and batted beautifully, but uh, it's an England supporter. Forget the Ashes for another year. I'll bring back a bad memory for you, boys. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. If Tomo don't get you, Lily must. Well, I don't know who's got us today, but uh, Steve Waugh and Alan Border have certainly put it out of reach. Uh, England probably haven't bowled as well as they can on that pitch. There's been a little bit of help now and again, but full credit to the two batsmen. Yes, and they've also uh, scored quickly, which is important when you're relying on spinners. They've got Warren and May, who are obviously, uh, well, they're hoping they'll do a lot of damage. So, one, you need a big total with spinners, but two, you need to get them quickly, so the spinners have got plenty of time to work away. And also, with the footmarks there, I think that, uh, that Warren and May might uh, do a bit of damage. And obviously, they can crowd the batsmen, so things have gone uh, perfectly for Australia. Well, Keith Fletcher says this is a good batting pitch. Well, England have bowled on it. I want to see uh, if those remarks come home to haunt him tomorrow when Australia bowl on it and England bat. So it's very important tomorrow that England have a very good batting day, don't you think? Most important. Certainly not a good situation for England and uh, Graham Gooch must be very depressed this evening, the second evening of this Cornhill Test match at Headingley. Down in the series and now down at Headingley and the Ashes, so far as I'm concerned, retained by the Australians. A great effort from Alan Border today, great tactical awareness of the situation, a fine knock from Stephen Waugh and from David Boone, and just the one success for England throughout this second day. We'll be back in Grandstand, BBC One, 10.55am.